Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here or at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and I love doing these reviews and I love being able to give you some ideas to put down in your reading list but at the same time please let me know of any others and other books that I should be reading. So I really value the exchange here so that I could broaden my reading and hopefully I could give you also some ideas of what to read as well. Now, this book that I'd like to review today was something I stumbled upon in the library and I've never read her books, but the covers looked interesting. I didn't read the back of the title. And the other thing was, it was a non-Anglo-Saxon name, which meant I could have a different perspective of possibly another culture coming from a book. So what is the book about by Marina? Enriquez, it is Things We Lost in the Fire. If you have a look here, it is a genre of horror. Now, I don't usually read horror books, but um, I didn't see this when I picked it out from the shelf. I just simply like the cover and it said full of claustrophobic terror. And I thought, oh, OK, this sounds really good. Had some really good uh, quotes by Dave Eggers, uh, the guy who wrote The Circle, mesmerizing hits with a Horse of a freight train. I thought, oh, okay, that sounds good. So what is this book about? It is not a novel. It is a collection of short stories, 12 short stories to be precise. It is the first book that has been translated into English from Spanish because the author is from Argentina and she is a journalist and a writer. She's got a few books and I'm currently also reading another collection of the short stories, which I'll also review called dangers of smoking in bed oh my god i'm so glad that i read this author her writing is brilliant even though it has been translated into english and i do admire translators who are able to pick up the original language and then be able to put it in english and still evoke those same feelings and the emotions that you get from the book without losing it in translation oh well I assume that because I don't I don't know Spanish. But at the same time, I also love the idea that I'm not reading another book from yet another Anglo-Saxon writer because I connect with, I guess, the Anglo-Saxon world. By having a, a South American writer, I come across completely new cultural ideas, completely new perspectives and situations that I would never have otherwise come across simply because I'm reading kind of the same genre of authors if that makes sense so it's really good at times to start reading beyond just authors from your own cultural background so this book before you start to panic and say Helen I don't read horror do not stress you're not going to have and see and read about blood and guts and knives and guts and it's not about that it's kind of like this slow fear of foreboding grimness some things in QR, not quite right. It's like that and there's a slow build up and then you read it and then by the end of it you go, oh, oh, and it makes you think hard. It's a bit creepy, it's creepy as well, but it's a good creepy if that makes sense. Well, no, it's not really a good creepy. It's kind of like, it makes you think, it makes you think. Okay, so you're probably going, oh, you're not selling it, Helen. You're not selling it. The thing is though, when you read this book, one of the, the strong themes that come out is they're all female protagonists and they're all quite strong and assertive in their own way, but they're within a society that has been impacted by the fear and the remnants of a dictatorship that was in Argentina in the 80s. Although as someone who grew up in the 80s and who had, in now in hindsight, we had family friends who were from Argentina who had escaped the regime over there and who were now living in Australia. As I was growing up, I didn't realize this. They weren't talking about it. Maybe they were talking to my parents, but as a young kid, I didn't really know what was happening. By reading the story and then exploring the history of this dictatorship that Argentina went through at this time, you start to realize that these people had gone through such a black time in their history and it's just happened in a fairly recent past. So I can only imagine that people my age, my peers and their parents had actually lived 
through a very dark period in Argentinian history, a period of dictatorship, of police brutality, of deaths, of torture, where citizens would just disappear off the street if they were left-leaning or talked against the, the government and the dictatorship at the time. So with this foreboding, with this feeling that is a remnant of a fairly recent past, this is the kind of streetscape and the feeling that you get in this book. So we get stories of, you know, ghost stories of uh, police brutality. We get stories where we get introduced to uh, characters who are living in slums. We see characters who are utterly poor or completely drugged out of their minds and living in a completely different society where it's they're basically trying to survive. So I think the grimness and the gruesomeness of the stories really are more about the remnant and the fear that has been left over from the Argentinian dictatorship of the time. So a lot of the stories are quite gothic, grim, dark, foreboding um, and and also talk about the elements of spiritualism, of religions that they try and try to make sense with regards to what's happened and why. Also the fact of that police brutality and um, awful situation that they went through. Look, this is a winner. This is a winner with regards to storytelling with regards to giving us a glimpse into a recent past of a terrible, terrible time that happened in South America. And uh, this is one to definitely read. You'll read it quite quickly because the stories are just phenomenal. So this is Things We Lost in the Fire by Mar Mariana Enriquez. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Bye for now.